This week in Minecraft, we've got some huge news to go over surrounding Minecraft Bedrock Edition and an extremely exciting feature coming to it. Along with that, we've got some changes in Java Edition to the Warden with something extremely controversial which Maljang have introduced. With that being said, drop the video a like to let Maljang know you are hyped for the world update and let's dive right into it. So everyone, let's start off right now with with the new exciting Bedrock Edition feature. If you've been sticking around here on the channel over the past few days, you might have noticed I made a video about a Minecraft Bedrock Edition Spectator Mode, also known as Game Mode 6, which was actually found in the beta preview. Due to some things that was going on previously, we did not know, however, if this was a permanent feature which Maljang intended to introduce, or if it was something they forgot to remove from the files. This happened previously with RTX, also known as Ray Tracing, which was actually found in a Bedrock Edition preview, which was then later removed by Mojang. It seems recently they've been trying some things out on Bedrock Edition, but did unfortunately forget to remove the code from the preview which was actually released to the players, therefore we got access to these features Maljang did not intend for us to see. Many of us including myself speculated that Maljang could have done the same thing with this experimental spectator mode aka game mode 6, but it has been found now that this is still in the files and Maljang have not removed it like they quickly did with RTX, meaning that game mode 6 is most likely to be a permanent feature as a part of Bedrock Edition now, which is incredible news. Just in case you do not know what spectator mode is, it is basically creative mode which allows you to clip through every item in the game. Basically turning your player into a camera, so you can just fly through blocks, everything, it's an awesome way to find caves, structures underground. It's been in Java Edition for a very, very long time, but it seems like finally Mojang have decided to introduce it to Bedrock Edition. This will make players very happy on Bedrock because this is a huge parity feature, something Bedrock players have been waiting years and years and years for, and finally Bedrock players are getting it. Of course, this is all work in progress, Maljang is still working behind the scenes, doing things, so at least as of when I'm recording this video, which is on the 17th of April, it seems like Maljang do intend to add this to the game permanently but of course it could be removed at a later date so just keep that in mind. Now let's move on to something else which has been quite controversial this week which was the removal of the copper goat horn. I made a full length video about this so if you want to check it out and find out the full rundown of everything be sure you check that video out for the specifics but basically Maljang did intend to add the goat horn as an item to the game as a part of the caves and cliffs update. Due to the delays and all the issues surrounding that, it was delayed to the world update. Now Maljang were left with an item they did not have any uses for which they desperately wanted to introduce into the game. That's where the copper goat horn came in. Maljang decided to add a crafting upgrade to the goat horn which would make it to a copper goat horn and that was basically an instrument which could be played just like something else of Save Thieves if you've ever played that game, just a fun instrument, fun item you can craft and play around with, a bit like melt blocks. However it seems the feedback was quite negative for this, people did not find it useful enough and wanted something more interesting, so Mojang did actually remove it, which is quite interesting. We've not seen Mojang do something like this for quite a while, and when they remove something like this it most likely will never come back. There has to be an overwhelming response for Maljang to act so um, drastically like this so I would guess that they've got something planned, they maybe got some of the uses behind the scenes they want to do something else or maybe just not add it back at all but as of when I'm recording this video the copper goat horn has been removed 
and at the moment we can only speculate as to when it will return if ever. Finally let's get on to the latest Java Edition snapshot which released this Wednesday 22W15A. It was quite a basic snapshot, we got a few interesting changes, let's just run through them real quick. New features in 22W15A, added advancement when the squad hops into town for getting each frog variant on a lead, added advancement sneak 100 for sneaking near a skulk sensor or warden to prevent it hearing you, and added a new ranged attack to the warden also known as the sonic charge. This feature is extremely debated at the moment, people are talking about it, giving their thoughts, but basically what the sonic charge is, is an extremely powerful attack which can not only travel upwards, downwards, any direction basically towards a player, just like a bow and arrow, but it also can phase through objects so it can travel through solid blocks. This basically means if you try to escape the warden without being sneaky, basically try to run away or build away or block the warden off, it can just attack you BAM with this sonic charge. This is, as I said earlier, quite controversial because the warden itself is already quite debated. Some people are excited for the warden whereas others think it is way too strong, way too overpowered for Minecraft. And I kind of understand this. With every boss in the game currently, it has to be travelled to or summoned. There's the Elder Guardian, which you have to swim down to the temple underwater to find it. There's the Wither, which has to be summoned, probably one of the most difficult to summon in the game. And then there's the Ender Dragon, where you have to find the portal, construct the portal, and then travel through the portal to get to it. The Warden is just there in the deep dark. I'm still not sure if Maljang intend to um, add some changes to it, but unlike the Elder Guardian's um, temple under the water, it is quite different because players underground, when they're mining, they cannot see where they're going, so there's an extremely high possibility that players will, um, on countless occasions, just stumble upon the Warden in the deep dark, and because of this there's some players that want it to um, be a bit weaker so that there's a bit more of a grace period where they can escape if they did not mean to stumble upon the warden but it seems like Maljunk have different ideas, I want it to be this completely overpowered beast that everyone is afraid of and they've shown this time and time again that's why they added the recovery compass basically saying well if you get defeated by the warden at least you can get back to your loot. Yeah Maljunk are not backing down on this one but yeah um we can only debate about this at the moment, talk about it, drop your thoughts in the comments, but I think the Sonic Charge, although a cool attack, just makes the Warden even more annoying for those um, set number of players that do not want to fight the Warden, and that is probably quite a lot of the players. A lot of us in game just like to be passive as we can, obviously defeating the enemies like skeletons, creepers, zombies, all of that good stuff, but many players do not really care for going after the bosses or the high-end enemies in the game and when there's a completely overpowered beast just lurking underground which can two hit a player in full netherite armor adding another powerful attack to it is obviously going to frustrate some players so drop your thoughts down below what do you think of the warden's new sonic charge attack it's been me g have an amazing day and i'll see you all tomorrow goodbye <laughs>